Hey guys, welcome back to Rudder Innovations, where today we're gonna to show you how to pressurize the water in your rain barrel system using solar power. Here we go. We made our garden area a little bigger this year and purchased two 50 gallon rain barrels because the plants do much better with rainwater as opposed to city water. After connecting them together and being full from our first rain, this was the result. As it got hotter, I decided to pressurize the rainwater to speed up my time in the garden. I could have run electricity to the side of the house, but I've been wanting to experiment with solar for quite some time. So I purchased a panel, charge controller, battery, and pump online, and then built a box to house all of the equipment. So here's a basic setup that we have for our box. We're going to have a battery over here. We're going to have the controller mounted up here, and then we'll have the pump separated on this side. That way, if there's any leaks, it's separated from the electronics. And we have the water coming in up at the top and the water coming out at the bottom. And we'll go ahead and get our pump installed now. Here's a pump we purchased online and I'll link it in the description below. It came with a couple of different hose connections which weren't that great because every time I tightened them, the rubber washer inside of them would collapse and partially block the flow of water. So I decided to use PVC. It also came with some Teflon tape and an inline filter which is really useful for our application. This is a 12 volt pump, which is made for RVs and campers. So it contains a built-in pressure switch to tell the pump to turn on when the faucet's in use and off when it's not, which will work great for our rain barrel system. You can see the arrows pointing the direction of the flow of the water. So we put the filter on the side where the water's coming in. Whenever you're wrapping Teflon tape around threads, you want to do about four revolutions in the direction you'll be tightening something onto the threads so it doesn't loosen the tape as you install your pipe. So in this instance, we'll be going around the threads clockwise. By using PVC connections, it was much easier to direct the flow of water and mount my water in and out ports on the front of the box for easy and kink-free access. It also was a sturdier connection than the cheap ones that came with the pump. Here's the connection I'll be using for the outflow of water from my pump. I used a hose to PVC adapter, making it easy to install or service my pump. I made the pipe a little longer than necessary so I could cut it to the proper size once I get the pump installed. The interior dimensions of my box were 17 and a half inches wide, 12 inches deep from front to back, 12 inches high, and the center divider gives me nine inches of space on the battery side and eight and a half inches for the pump. Now that we have a pump installed, we can install the plumbing for our outflow of water. Once that was tight, we installed another hose to PVC adapter for the inflow of water. Next, I sanded the pipe where I would be gluing the final hose to PVC adapter for the outflow of water and cut off the excess pipe. All right, the way I'm putting all these plumbing connections together, I'm sanding them first I'm using the purple and blue Primer and glue, priming it first, letting that air dry. I've already primed the other pipe. Get your glue on there. You're gonna push it in all the way, turn it when you do it, and you gotta hold it or else the glue will push it back out. After you hold it for a couple seconds, it should be good. Now that we have the pump and plumbing installed, we can install the electronics, which I'll link everything I purchased in the description below. Know that I went a little overkill with the parts I decided to use, but after doing the math, I literally got five times the system for just $100 more, which also allows me to expand my system down the road. I went with a 12 volt, 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery since my pump pulls five amps. If you wanna save a little money here, you can purchase a lead acid battery instead. Connecting everything to the charge controller is very simple. There's a picture of the battery, solar panel, and load symbolized by a light bulb here, all with a pair of negative and positive terminals below each picture. I also went with a 100 amp charge controller because it was only $5 more than the 30 amp charge controller. And I'll show you some of the features of it later in the video. Now that the charge controller is installed, we want to connect it to the battery first. I use about seven inches of my 10 gauge solar panel wire to connect the charge controller to the battery and crimped a couple of ring connectors on and started by connecting the negative terminal first and then the positive. 
Now that we have our equipment in the box, we can hook it up to the rest of the system. First, I remove the hose connected to my rain barrels I was using to water my plants and attach it to the pump's outflow water connection. Next, using a section of hose I made up, I connected my rain barrels to my pump. First, we'll pull our two wires coming from our solar panel through the back of the box. I drilled a couple holes there for them and they're not connected to the solar panel yet. We'll connect these to the positive and negative terminals on the charge controller. Now we'll go ahead and connect the wires to our solar panel and make sure it's charging. The solar panel is a 100 watt panel and gives me the ability to connect multiple panels together if I decide to expand my system later. To save costs, I created my own mount out of wood that situates the panel at a 45 degree angle towards the sun. For the board at the bottom that holds the panel stationary, I use my table saw to route out a section in the 2x4 the same thickness of my panel which left a lip that covered the base of the panel and held it still. If you're wondering how I did this using my table saw, I'll link my half lap joint video, which is essentially the same concept. Because the water pump pulls a little over five amps, I went with a 10 gauge wire, which already had the MC4 solar panel connections installed. I only needed 30 feet for my application and I probably should have run it through conduit from my pump box to the fence, but I only buried it about six inches underground so it would be easy to pull up and take with us in the event that we move. Now you can see on the charge controller that the solar panel is connected and it is charging our battery. And before we connect our load, which is whatever we're gonna be using with our solar system, we wanna make sure that the load is set to off. I like this charge controller because it works with a variety of different battery types. It has a couple of USB connections that are two amps. You also can see when your load is on and off, you can see when the solar panel is actually charging it or when it's nighttime and it's not. And you can change this figure up here to display amps, temperature, even voltage, which is what we have it set to now to see how your battery's doing. You'll notice I painted the box with leftover paint from our shed build and also added a plexiglass top so I can see inside the box without opening the lid. This helps me monitor the battery level, charging and load status, as well as potential leaks without ever having to open the lid. This project was definitely one of my favorites and gave me a simple way to have an off the grid watering system with the potential to expand it down the road. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If you like this video, like it. And if you're watching on a medium, you can subscribe. Feel free to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Peace and God bless.